Hello everyone. Today we will be going to do block number one that is all about leaves. So lesson one is parts of leaf. What is our aim over here? To relate the parts of leaf to their function. What are the keywords over here? First is microscope. A microscope used to see the very small objects bigger. Stomata. Stomata, the tiny pores on the lower surface of leaf for the exchange of gases. Let's watch this video. A leaf consists of two main parts, a leaf stalk and a leaf blade. The leaf blade is the flat and broad part of the leaf. The petiole is the leaf stalk that helps attach the leaf to the stem or branches. The midrib keeps the leaf upright. The veins and the midrib carry water, minerals and food to all parts of the plant. Stomata helps the leaf to exchange gases. So now let's discuss the things. The first question is which part of the leaf did you label and which part mentioned in the table couldn't you label? These are the leaf parts, vein, leaf plate, midrib, midrib and petiole that we have already seen in the video. Now come on the generalized discussion part. What are the functions of different parts of leaf? Here are some functions of the parts of leaf like there are different parts and each one is having the different function for example lamina leaf blade it makes the surface of the leaf bigger so that more sunlight can fall on the leaf for making food second petiole it supports the blade of the leaf midrib it helps to keep the leaf upright position and also protects it from the heavy wind. Veins. These carries water, minerals and food. Stomata. These are the tiny opening on the surface of leaves and that allow the gas exchange. Now come on this higher order thinking question. If a mango leaf has the same parts as rose leaf, why do they look different? Answer is both the leaves have the parts like leaf plate, midrib, veins and petiole. But these parts look different in the two leaves so that the leaf look different. For example mango leaf. It is having smooth margin and rose leaf having toothed margin. Some plants may have veins parallel to each other while other plant have network like vein. Some leaves are green while other may be yellow. Some are big and some are small. Now LP2 is leaves the kitchen of plant. What is our aim over here? To describe the process of photosynthesis. What are the keywords over here? First is photosynthesis, the process by which leaves make food. Chlorophyll, the green substance present in the leaf. Decaying, worsening condition. Starch, a complex form of sugar that is stored in the leaves and other parts of plant. Now let's watch this video. Green leaves make food for the plant using water, carbon dioxide and sunlight. Roots absorb water. Carbon dioxide enters the leaf through tiny pores called stomata. Chlorophyll in the green leaves traps sunlight. Food is made in the form of simple sugar and oxygen is released. 
This process of making food is called photosynthesis. Now, let's do the generalized discussion. What food do the leaves make and how? Leaves make the food in the form of simple sugars. Oxygen is released during this process through the stomata. Chlorophyll present in the leaves traps the sunlight. This helps the leaf to make food using carbon dioxide and water. This process is called photosynthesis. The food thus prepared is transported to all parts of the plant and extra sugar is stored as a starch in different parts of plant. Now come on the higher order thinking question. As we know green leaves or plants can make their own food but how do non-green plants get food? Many plants like daughter plant are not green. They live on the other green plant or decaying plants and animals and steal food from them using specialized root. Now the LP3 is test for starch in leaves. What is our aim over here? To infer the leaves contain starch. What are the keywords? The keyword is edible. Edible means something that can be eaten. And inedible that is we cannot eat. Let's watch this video first. A leaf makes food in the form of simple sugar and then stores it in the form of starch. We can test the presence of starch in a leaf. Boil the leaf in water. Then boil the leaf in alcohol to make it colorless. Dip the leaf in cold water. Put a few drops of iodine solution on the leaf after it dries. If the leaf turns blue-black, it proves that it has starch. Now let's do the generalized discussion. What is the significance of each step in the starch test? First, the green leaf is boiled to soften it and then boil in alcohol to break down chlorophyll and to make it colorless. Next, iodine is added to check whether the leaf contains the complex sugar starch. If the leaf turns blue-black, it proves that the presence of starch in it and sugar is produced during the photosynthesis. Higher order thinking question is, what happens to the starch made by the leaves? The plant use some of the food that is made to get energy and for growth and the extra food that is stored in the leaves, roots, stem, fruits or seeds in the form of starch. Now let's do the LP4 that is transpiration. What is our aim over here? to explain the importance of transpiration. The keywords are transpiration, the process of water loss from leaves. Second is water cycle, the continuous cycle in which water changes to water vapor and fall back on the earth. Now let's watch this video. If we wrap a plant in a transparent polythene bag and keep it outside for a day, we will see water droplets in the polythene bag. These droplets are condensed water vapor released by the leaves due to transpiration. Transpiration is the process of losing excess water through leaves. 
This helps the plant to absorb more water through the roots and keep the plant cool. Let's come on the generalized discussion part. How the loss of water through transpiration important for plant? As the excess water is lost in the form of water vapor, more water is absorbed by the roots to make up for this water loss. It acts in the same way as juice sucked through a straw. More we suck, the more juice is pulled up. Just as sweating helps us to cool our body, similarly transpiration helps the plant cool down. Now come on higher order thinking question. As water vapor is released through transpiration, can we say that it plays a important role in maintaining a water cycle? Why or why not? The answer is transpiration add water vapor to surrounding air. In a forest, many plants transpire together, so a lot of water vapor is formed which rises in the air. It contributes to form the cloud and then as a rain. So transpiration helps in maintaining the water cycle. Thank you.